Welcome to um, Venture Richmond and the City of Richmond's Downtown Development Forum. Uh, this is an annual forum where we showcase all the development happening downtown. And we're really excited to have about 15 or 16 developers with us today. And we want to start off with Scott Ucrop. I'm going to invite the developers up. We're sharing mics this year. Um, and uh, with Corrugated Box to tell us a little bit about this wonderful project. And Alex Dom in our office. Where's Alex? Oh, okay, thanks. Um, great, okay. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, again, I'm Scott Ucrop with Three North Architects, and we are over in this part of the building, in the Cargated Box Building, and it's a pleasure to have all of you here. In 2005, I guess, we presented at the Downtown Development Forum, and just, I guess, over the John Marshall, so it's exciting to talk about this building in its infancy and just sort of the evolution of it. Since it's been pretty exciting, we've got two of the original tenants here, um, Three North and Circle S Studio, but over the last few years, we've been able to attract some really incredible technology and creative firms. And just sort of the vibrancy and excitement in Manchester, we feel like we're sort of the epicenter of that. Lots of cool things happening. And so we're just thrilled that you all could be here and sort of have this presentation um, here today and kind of overlook the beautiful skyline. Thanks to um, the Reynolds South Project, we've got wonderful views from out here. So um, just welcome. I'll kind of turn it over to the rest of the group. Thanks. Well, thanks for having us. And, you know, it's so exciting to have Tumblr here. Do you want to tell us about some of your uh, edgy IT uh, tenants? Sure. Um, you know, it's sort of Tumblr. I, I assume most of you know um, that firm. They are I think the 13th or 14th most heavily trafficked website in the country. They're now in, I think, um, I forget how many different countries they're in, but we've got their whole support crew down here. A guy named Mark LaFontaine was really their second employee, started support for Tumblr just um, on his own. And now we've got, I think, 13 or 14 native speakers downstairs. So every time they go into a new country, they add um, bring on somebody that speaks that native language. So they've got about 30 folks. Tumblr as a whole has 105. And so they manage, I think, between 57 and 60 million blogs. It's a micro blogging site, for lack of a better term. So that's exciting. Tumblr was kind of introduced to us through a firm called Mobilux, which um, developed the Tumblr iPhone app. And now they've got it on Android, and they've since grown from about six to about 10 people developing other sort of mobile apps. They held up the RVA hackathon here about a month or so ago in this space. Um, they all discovered us through a, a small a firm called CoLab that does web development. CoLab was started by a guy named Eddie O'Leary, a, a VCU grad, probably 2006, 2007. Eddie kind of went out on a limb, rented a desk from us here as a one-person guy, and now he's up to 10 people. He's kind of grown across from his space across the way to the space right behind you, that's his conference room. So we see a real opportunity here with these creative and technology firms. We've got about three or four other startup um, firms. And so ultimately after this event, we're gonna subdivide this space to allow for sort of two and three person firms to get started here. And the beauty of this building that we like is not only the openness and interaction among the firms, but also sort of the flexibility that we can kind of move walls as needed as people sort of ebb and, pl ebb and flow with their size of the companies. So. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. Glad y'all are here. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. How many people have been here before? Is this a new experience for folks? It's a great, great space. And Camden um, Dogtown Market downstairs, which we appreciate there doing the food. It's a great lunch and dinner spot and breakfast. Um, so next we've got Lee Downey from the City of Richmond to give us a little overview of some of the exciting things that the city has going on. Um, and um, thanks for joining us, Lee. Good morning. Wow. wow. Um, glad to be here. This is a, you know, a great day, wonderful weather, but I hope everybody in the room really feels what's going on. You know, what we're seeing in Richmond now is years and years of work many people, many people in this room, many of the people who have been with the city, and, and Mayor Jones' real push to get things going downtown. And I think what we're seeing is the Richmond that we knew was coming, the Richmond that we wanted to see coming, we're watching that unfold. And it's an exciting time to be here now. 
I'm specifically going to talk about some of the downtown activities. Uh, many of you have heard, but I wanted to bring up, I think that's the second slide. Yeah. Go, back one, go back one more. <coughs> what I want to talk about today mainly is the activities going, down and going on down in the bottom. This is really a, a, a catalytic area. We have some catalytic projects that the city has been working on. Uh, staff out there, Jeannie Welliver, has spent a lot of time working on a lot of these projects. But I want to talk a little bit first about the train station. Um, this is really the gem of the bottom. It's, um, it's one of the most recognized uh, buildings on the interstate all the way from Florida to New York. Whichever way you're going, people know the train station. And of course, the historic train station, the, the older building in front is complete. That's where our offices are. And this fall, the back end, you should see renovations starting. And what we see there is a great opportunity to enhance the view, to really pull people off 95, to bring people downtown. We have about, all combined, about 45 million cars pass the site on Interstate 95. When you combine the circulation system and downtown expressway, we're looking at about 65 million people that will see this building, or see it now, and we'll see it upon its completion. And as I say, that'll begin this fall. What we hope to do is to, uh, to wrap up, we're gonna put a, a Richmond Tourism Center, Visitor Center in the bottom. When I say visitor, I use that loosely because this is a place where Richmonders and people from the Richmond region can find out what's going on, what they can do. But it's also a place to pull people off the interstate, to catch people coming off the trains. We have about 9,000 people coming in from Megabus. And this is really the hub of transportation and, and tourism in the city. So we see there's a great place for its visitor center, tourist center, and we're working with the state to also make this a state tourism welcome center. In the back, we hope to bring in something like a indoor market to enhance the current farmer's market as a complement to that, to keep it going year round. In the top, we hope to attract one of those phenomenal eye-catching tenants that will really add to the pull from 95 and everywhere else. So that should all be good and going this fall. If you can flip the slide. This is just a picture of the top floor what it will look like when, when all is said and done. This is where we hope to get that real eye-catching tenant in there. And the bottom are examples of other similar markets and what we see happening in our market. Um, you know, the, the indoor market, the activity, the year-round activity. Making connection, it isn't just the train station, it's the area around the train station. We call this the Chaco Public Square. And what we're looking at there is the 17th Street Farmer's Market. We um, we see this as an opportunity, and there's funding in the budget, over $2 million, to address the farmer's market. And I know many people over the years have talked about, we need to make that more functional. We need open space in the bottom. We need something flexible. We still need room for a farmer's market, but when it's not a farmer's market, what can it be? But here are examples of successful public squares. We have money in the budget to look at that, to make it more of an open space, a plaza, a, you know, a European plaza, where when the market's not going on, restaurants can come out. Um, people can gather. So that's what we're looking at on that and we should begin that within the next month or so, the plans for that and hopefully by next season we'll have a completely new or at least a, a public square on its way. And to connect these two, that's just another picture of the farmer's market and what we see is revitalizing that streetscape down there and getting foot traffic, getting people out in the street, eating, dining, shopping. The Franklin Street Restoration what we see here, this, this is the road that goes, it, we're currently dead ends into the market. This will be opened back up through the market right past the visitor center. The funding is in place for 14th Street to 17th Street, really 14th Street being an entry from the interstate to 17th Street. And this will just be improved um, pedestrian limited access for vehicles going through the building, but will really connect the shed, the station, the farmer's market, and all the restaurants and different um, amenities in the bottom. <coughs> the Arts District, um, as many of you know, that was approved by Council on Monday night. So we now have an Arts District in the City of Richmond. There's funding available for some of the incentives and programs we put in place. Many of those will become available July 1st. Um, what we have here are, is a larger district that contains much of the arts and culture of downtown and a smaller targeted district which has added incentives for development, such as permitting waivers and things like that. And just an example is what we know as Theater 4, now the Virginia Repertory. This is just one of the gems and one of the examples of what Broad Street can and will be, and we hope the Arts District is the next step to make that happen. That's a quick flyby.
Great. So, Lou, how, what, what, what's in the budget for the train shed? How much? The train shed, overall, the project is $28 million, um, for the train shed all in. And we have about $2.1 million for the farmer's market and another two and a half for the first phase of Franklin Street. Great. And that's in the approved budget. Um, and there's a lot in the hopper for next year, I understand, right, Lee? Yes. <laughs> um, all right, next week we want to invite Bob Skunda of Biotech Keeps Growing, and um, there's a real exciting project on the horizon this year. Hey, Bob. Good morning. Um, okay, we'll get to biotech in a moment here. Um, I'm going to talk about the project and uh, uh, hopefully uh, Leslie or Sacha are here in the audience and they're going to talk about the company that we're doing the project for because in the 15 years I've been at the biotech park this is undoubtedly the most exciting company that I have ever seen uh, in terms of not just growth uh, but the impact that they're having uh, on the biotech park and our entire community. We're adding about a quarter of a million square feet uh, which will take us to about 1.3 million square feet. This building here, for those of you who haven't been uh, uh, on 5th Street coming off of uh, 64 from the airport, is now gone. This is the old Biotech 3 building, and again, I would have never thought we would have been tearing down good buildings to uh, put up new ones, but uh, that's what we're doing uh, in order to accommodate this. So go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this event was just about uh, five weeks ago. We called it the Big Chomp. And uh, this started the demolition. Uh, we uh, actually uh, uh, had an event on the top of the parking structure to uh, begin the demolition process uh, and uh, literally uh, took a, a big chomp out of the corner of uh, Biotech 3 before uh, uh, the uh, demolition contractors got started. Go ahead. Uh, this is about a week ago, and you can now see the site is completely cleared and uh, the uh, uh, basically the foundation, the case on work, uh, is underway and we hope to get going with the vertical probably within the next week or so. Uh, go ahead to the next project. So, oh, go back one. So what is happening is that, um, let me get, uh, okay, this is going to be between 5th Street and Navy Hill and you're looking over the Altria uh, CRT building, Biotech 9, uh, at Biotech 8 expansion. And this will be, uh, as I say, almost a quarter of a million square feet, six stories fronting on East Jackson Street between 5th and Navy Hill that will connect to the existing Biotech 8 building. Go ahead. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a shot uh, uh, looking uh, uh, south on 5th Street over the existing Biotech 8 building to what will be the back of, uh, of the new building. Go ahead. Uh, this is kind of a uh, bird's eye view looking down. We're also adding 200 parking spaces to the parking structure. Uh, fortunately, we had the foresight to uh, design the parking structure to be able to add two more levels, and that's just about done uh, uh, with the addition of those parking spaces. Go ahead. Uh, this is the first phase uh, uh, that w is uh, under construction right now, and then as soon as we get this phase completed, uh, and get HDL into uh, the first three floors of the building, then Biotech 5, which is right next door, the small building, will come down. We'll probably start demolition on that uh, by the end of this calendar year, and then we'll start with the second phase. Go ahead. And then that's what uh, will, uh, the second phase will look like, again, between um, uh, Fifth and uh, Navy Hill Drive. So, uh, real excitement for us, and uh, again, we just love having Health Diagnostic Laboratory in the research part. Uh, and uh, here in our community. Stay up here because are Sasha here or Leslie? All right. Let's okay. Try to do all right. All right. Too. I'll do them. All right. Okay. I'll do them for. All right. Bob has not seen these yet. I don't think. Okay. Uh, this company did not even exist four years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I know. Uh, I've known Tanya Mallory uh, back to my days when I was Secretary of Commerce, and when she decided to come back to Richmond from the West Coast to start her company. Um, I said, you need to be in the research park. Uh, she got started in two of our incubator laboratories that uh, uh, in total were about 1,200 square feet. Uh, that was in June uh, four years ago. Uh, they are now over 500 people with the expansion that we're providing that will take them up close to 1,000 folks. They are a disease management company 
they do uh, uh, diagnostic testing, clinical testing uh, for uh, uh, disease states that require regular follow-up uh, uh, in terms of uh, the efficacy of the uh, treatment uh, that the doctor has prescribed with the patient. Their business model is unique in that they're not only providing the testing, but what they're also doing is uh, providing the service to both the patient and the doctor in terms of health coaches, nutritionists, um, um, exercise coaches, and others to really help to uh, determine uh, that the treatment uh, is going as prescribed uh, and that um, uh, the, hopefully the patient is preventing uh, disease ultimately uh, and not just um, uh, curing uh, disease. Uh, they're currently providing out of this central laboratory testing in 30 states. Uh, this, this is their national laboratory here in Richmond. Uh, samples are FedExed in every day, approximately 30,000 samples a day coming in now. Uh, and that will uh, grow exponentially as they continue to add to their laboratory space. Right now, the only thing that's preventing them from continuing to grow is us getting them in this space. So that's why the timetable on this project is so critical and they're such a, such a phenomenal uh, success story. That's great. And I think there's the latest slide said 70,000 a day which every time I talk to them, their numbers change. They're growing yes. at six to eight percent a week. A week. Um, and so, is anybody in the audience from Style Weekly? So when Style said, asked questions about the success of biotech <laughs> and our startup companies, you have one company like this a decade, we're gonna hit some home yeah, runs, right? right? Exactly, exactly. Anyway, thank you, All Bob. Right. And, um, um, oh, the investment for uh, Bob, the investment for the biotech um, eight. 48 million, okay, great. The accounting firm of McFarland Partners is tallying up our uh, investment figures this morning. So uh, we'll, you'll see, we'll ask that question maybe a couple other times. So Brian, welcome back. You, um, you and Bob and Miller have been to every single one of our presentations. I think, and Bob Skunda. Um, so tell us what's happening at VC. Well, I'm gonna start with uh, housing. And uh, I, for those that are interested in building student housing, I would just say, uh, uh, take a deep breath and pause because what we, what you're going to see is we're going to be adding a thousand beds here in the between this year and next and the private developer community around us is almost 2,000 beds in a, a two-year period that's 3,000 beds and so uh, we're a bit concerned in uh, that we don't overbuild either that we don't as the university or that the private side doesn't uh, overbuild as well because that impacts on us all from a standpoint of uh, what you can charge for rents to cover your costs. So uh, we're in the midst of a uh, demand study to see where we need to be on housing. This will put us at uh, just under 6,000 beds. Uh, when we started on the journey 10 years ago we had about 2,000 beds. So uh, we have been building to meet the growth of the university and uh, whether or not there's still demand and how great the demand is, is uh, something that we're investigating and looking at right now to make sure that we're doing that. But here's uh, Gray Street South. Uh, we're very clever with our names when we for housing. <laughs> uh, as you'll see, this, this one is opening uh, this uh, fall in August. It's uh, 479 beds. What's unique about this one and uh, what will be Gray Street North, another clever name, is the, uh, uh, the, it's al almost a residential college. And from that I mean this program uh, in this facility uh, will focus on community engagement. So students that are interested in community engagement uh, kind of careers, there will be academic programs in this building that will supplement their uh, formal education within the university. And, and Gray Street North, it's global education. And uh, the next one after this will be leadership. So they're creating a theme within the living uh, community for students that have those kinds of interests. So uh, this is uh, Gray Street uh, South, as I said. Next is uh, Gray Street North. It's a little more playful in its design. Uh, it can be, it's closer to Broad Street. Uh, this is underway now and we'll be uh, ready for occupancy uh, next summer. Uh, this is the uh, Gilmer Street uh, addition, what we're calling it, but the, uh, this is adding on to the Broad and Belvedere student apartments. 
uh, and it's at the corner of Gilman Street. It's actually uh, helping the architecture of that particular building by having this addition on the end. Uh, this will open this summer. It's uh, 70 beds. Uh, next is uh, our University Learning Center. Uh, two floors of uh, classrooms and we have uh, plenty of classrooms in the, the uh, 20 to 40 size seats. What we haven't had is classrooms larger than that in the 50 to 80 or 100 seat uh, classrooms and this building will provide that on the first two floors and then the School of Social Work will be moving to this facility from the Raleigh building over at the corner of Harrison and Franklin and then the, the top floor will be the Center for uh, Teaching Excellence. So the classroom portion is sort of going to be beta testing for most effective means of delivering academic instruction and that, from that standpoint, from the standpoint of technology. So uh, that's exciting from that perspective. That'll open next summer. Uh, this is uh, one of the most exciting projects we've done, the In Institute of Contemporary Arts. Uh, it is uh, fundraising dependent as to when it starts, uh, but I will tell you that they're about halfway through uh, the fundraising necessary for the, its $32 million budget. Uh, internationally acclaimed architect. If you see the little teddy bear, that's a real sculpture. Uh, it won't be at our building. Uh, anybody want to take a guess on how much that thing cost? It's $9 million. We're not going to buy it, but the, uh, <laughs> the architects thought it'd be clever to put it in the rendering, you know, and so what sort of what our appetite, but uh, very uh, unique design, exciting design. This is looking west, and the next shot here we'll be looking back to the east uh, in an active uh, area with a, a reflecting, small reflecting pool in it. Uh, the areas you can see at the end of the galleries there will have the ability to have moving uh, kind of uh, outdoor exhibitions as well. So it's very exciting and and what we really need if there's anybody in here is we need a ten million dollar donor. Anybody? We'll put your name on it. No. Uh, okay. Well, or if you want to give less, you know, we'll take uh, we'll take your donations and appreciate it very much. Uh, going on. Uh, we're just now hiring the architects to, uh, this is looking straight down Schaefer Court towards the library. Uh, we, I was talking earlier, the, our library is, uh, I guess you could celebrate it of its time. I think the School of Architecture, when it was built, was brutalism. And uh, as a result, it's, uh, it, it is of its time. We hope that when we add on to the library, uh, this project is about an $80,000 addition and an $80,000 or 80, square, 80,000 square feet addition, 80,000 square feet renovation uh, that will be able to do something with the exterior as well to make it fit better on, on the campus. But libraries are no longer uh, where the book stacks are. I mean, they're there, but the, the library's usage of today is information exchange. And so it's where students gather, it's where they study, it's where they do the, the uh, research uh, electronically. Uh, there's still books in the library, but most libraries are moving a lot of their uh, stacks uh, out of the library into low dollar uh, rental space to free up the space within the library to be used more for the information commons. We moved out about uh, uh, 300,000 volumes uh, three years ago in order to make some renovations on the second floor. So that's pretty standard in what's going on in uh, higher ed. Uh, just, uh, we do a lot of work on the inside of our buildings. These are just two examples that are going on down there. Uh, and there's always within uh, research space and within the hospital, uh, renovations going on so that's you never see that but it's lots of money is invested on an annual basis probably uh, 30 to 40 million dollars between the university and the health system uh, the typical ordinary usual renovations to keep up with what's going on in medicine uh, and of course our gem the McLaughlin uh, School of Medicine it's on schedule it'll open uh, in December 
Uh, it will be the Center for uh, Medicine Teaching. Uh, it will have four floors of uh, classrooms, one for each of the four years of medical school. And it will allow us to increase the total class size from 750 uh, students to 1,000. So we will be one of the largest academic medical centers in the country with 1,000 students here uh, in uh, in their educational portion of becoming a, a medical doctor. It's remarkable, actually, when you think about it. Next. And uh, I, I don't have a picture for you today because we haven't yet got the approval of our board of directors at the health system for it, so I didn't want to show it here without having it approved first. But uh, this is a big building that's going on the front of uh, what used to be the old Richmond Eye and Ear Hospital. Uh, it, it is uh, approved. It is, it, we are in design. We will start some of the renovation and demolition of the existing building uh, over the summer with the excavation for the building starting uh, in uh, late fall. So it's, uh, it, what it will do is it's going to centralize in one place on the campus all of the pediatric clinic operations. It's, there won't be hospital beds. The hospital beds will stay in the hospital, but this will consolidate so you don't have to go to two or three different locations throughout the enterprise if you're, look, if you're after pediatric uh, uh, treatment. So it's a great project, exciting project, and uh, much needed in, uh, as a consolidation on the campus and within Richmond. So all in all, we're at uh, about 450 million underway right now in different stages of uh, construction. So that's it. That's Thank you. And you, know, you didn't mention Stephen Hall, the architect for the Institute of Contem Contemporary Art, and I and Pei, the his architectural firm, did the School of Medicine. So that and we're up to at least five star architects in Richmond now. If you look at the Brand Center, Clive Richard, right, and. Um, the gentleman that did the Federal Reserve Bank building, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Robert um, and then Robert A. Stern, he did the Federal Courthouse. The federal I, would just, I would just say if you work with a Starkitect, uh, you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> and most of them work with local architects as well, so it's a good team effort there. We're not dishing our locals, but it is kind of fun to have some world-class architects join Jefferson in Richmond. Um, next, we've got Al Parker from Apple Reed who just flew in from the West Coast to join us this morning. And they've got a project you might have read about uh, in, in a couple weeks ago about hotels, but we're not going to hear about that this morning. We're going to wait till next year. Good morning. Well, it's exciting to hear everything that's going on in Richmond. Um, unfortunately, we're only playing a very, very small port, part in that right now. Um, Apple Reed has been in business for about 10 years. and. Um, we started out on 3rd Street, but moved a location to 814 East Main Street, which is the left side of this brick facade that you see here. And about four years ago, the building to the right, just in front of the truck, became available, and we were in a growth spurt then, and was able to purchase that building and, and join it with ours and expand into that. And just recently, Nathan's uh, Custom Taylor Building became available, which Unfortunately, in this particular photo, is, is behind the pickup or the, behind the van. But we purchased that building and um, decided to expand into that space as well. Um, the owner of the company is very big into real estate, obviously, because of the type of company that we are. So uh, we decided to expand into that, and there wasn't anything of integrity in Nathan's building to maintain. So we decided that um, the best thing to do would be to, to tear that down and start anew. And this was our conceptual rendering of what we were going to do. So in that process, we tore the building down, um, engaged Commonwealth Architects to help us with that, and uh, Horgan Construction as well, and it's coming along quite, quite well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just some of the, the demolition that occurred because there wasn't anything of salvage there except for the material itself, um, we decided to go ahead, like I said, and, and tear that structure down. Um, and this is the process of that going on. We thought we would try and take a photographic record of that. The thought was to try and save the facade of Nathan's, but there just wasn't anything there. It, there was a, a metal facade that was put on the building probably, we suspect, about 20 or 30 years ago and wasn't done very well. So there just wasn't any reason to, to hold on to that. 
and here they're they're taking that down. Anyway, we should occupy the space uh, end of next month, I think. Um, we're just about finished with um, all of the exterior work, and uh, we've expanded into their, we've, we've broken into that so that we can get into that space, and um, plan to have a presence here for quite some time, and hopefully we'll have a few other things to talk about at the next meeting. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. And I hear, do you agree you have a rooftop patio in that new building? Yes. If you go back to that other slide for a second. Um, no, go forward one. I think we, uh, we right all want an invitation to that. <laughs> so party right on that. The exterior terrace that we decided to um, incorporate into the space just to make use of it. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yes. Thanks. Oh. The, oh, the investment amount. Oh, the investment amount is about um, 1.75 million. Oh, great. Thanks. Thank you so much. And we'll look for, we'll welcome you back next year to talk about the Shaco Hotels. Uh, Michael Campbell, this is over the end zone, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Michael Campbell with Dominion Realty Partners, and I'm happy to be here today to give you an overview on, on, on the John Marshall the renovation of the John Marshall Hotel. Um, let me do this first slide, please. Um, at, just a quick history the hotel opened in 1929, closed in 87, and reopened again in 97. Um, and then closed again in 2004. We, we got involved with the project in 2007 with the hope and desire to, to, to start construction at the end of 2008. <clears throat> but as many of you know, that was a, a, a tough time in the financial markets. And so we backed up and retooled and decided to move forward with the project, but under a different financing program using the HUD program. Um, and those of you who have been involved with that, it's a lengthy uh, process, but a good product when you get there, uh, which it took us about 18 months, and so we started construction in, uh, in April of 2010. We have 238 Class A apartments. Uh, most of them are efficiencies and one bedrooms and fewer, fewer two bedrooms. We're proud to say at this point we are about 80% leased. Um, having delivered, gotten our first TCO at the end of, end of 2000, excuse me, December of last year, and then phased in the TCOs until March of this year. So that was when we delivered the product. And to, to beat 80% of the 238 is, just shows you the strength of the downtown market. Um, our average size of unit is, they're smaller, as I mentioned, more ones and twos, which is very much in line with the market at about 705 square feet. Um, we have a first floor, uh, excuse, we have uh, retail on the first floor, about 26,000 square feet. Um, John Marshall Barber, who was originally in this building in 1929, not the same barber, but the same, uh, same company, is, uh, is moving back in, and I'm glad to say he'll be moving in this weekend. So those of you who need a haircut, please go down there to help him support his business. Um, we have a banquet and a, a meeting space. It's about 17,000 square feet. For those of you who have been in the hotel before, many of you have, it's the Virginia room and the Marshall room. And in total, you can get about 800 people in those two rooms. Uh, Colony Catering, who is a, is a well-known catering company in this market, has leased that space as well as building out a commercial kitchen which can service that. Um, they've had numerous events, you can go back one please, they've had numerous events and have about 150 events scheduled for this year. So those of you who have a big meeting, a wedding to plan, please consider that. Um, parking we have available in a variety of surface lots and parking decks in and around the neighborhood. Um, and as, as a company, we, we, all of our new projects and redevelopments we focus on green sustainability. And this project in particular, we went after a green globe designation, uh, similar to Lee, but more, more, more suitable for renovation, especially apartments. And the most, the min, you can get four globes, and we were proud to say we got three out of four globes. Um, and during the construction, we were able to generate about 1,000 jobs associated with the project. Um, just some project amenities. Obviously, at a 16-story building in its location, you've got great views of the river and the city. Um, we've got a fitness center on site. Uh, all the amenities you would imagine with a Class A apartment project. This is, this is our, our club room, which is available to our residents um, at any time, but also they can, they can lease it for a specific party for a nominal fee. Next slide, please. Capitalization, I, I touched on our, our financing a little bit earlier. Total project cost, uh, Charles, was 70 million. It might have gone up a little bit, but we won't, don't need to talk about that today. Um, the HUD financing uh, construction and permanent loan was a $41 million loan. 
The balance of it, uh, $29 million, was a combination of historic state and federal tax credit equity as well as some partner equity. Um, 24 months of construction, we talked about that, and we talked about our delivery of our units, which we phased in uh, and got our final TCO in March of this year. Uh, I'm going to show you some before, before and after slides. Obviously, this is the before. You can talk about the cars. Uh, and that, but that is Franklin Street looking up from six. Um, next slide, please. And kind of the new version. You can keep going, please. This is the, the lobby. One of the requirements that we had was to restore the building to its original condition and maintain a lot of the features associated with it. This is what the lobby looked like in 1929, and this is what it looks like when we renovated it. For those of you who, have, who were in that building between 29 and, and 2012, it looked a lot different, um, to say the least. Sometime in the, probably in the 70s, might be even the 60s, they went through and, and poured a slab. Let me get my little pointer here. Um, basically, that enclosed that space into two spaces, um, invert, and, and essentially put shag carpet and mirrors in there and it totally destroyed it. Yeah, very much. Must have been the time Elvis was in the building. I, I'm not sure. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the Marshall Room, uh, one of the ballrooms I mentioned early on. Um, and next slide shows you the renovation of the project uh, and what it looks like today. Uh, this is the lobby looking from the mezzanine level back to Fifth Street. Um, this, the, you can kind of see the window that's, that's blacked in. Um, and you can see where the, where the metal comes across. That's what, what we opened up to, to enlarge the space. Um, you know, that was one of the days where you were really wondering what, what we were doing. Um, next slide, please. But the end result was, was pretty spectacular. Um, next slide. Uh, main lobby coming in, in off of 5th Street. Um, you can see how we've opened up everything, as I mentioned. Uh, next slide. And what it looks like today. Again, another, another picture of the John Marshall Ballroom during construction. Uh, these are some of our, our model units, and you can see the transformation if you go to the next slide. Um, it happens that quick in construction, as we all know. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Uh, some of our other, other model units, these are our, our, this are one of our one-bedroom units. Um, and that's it. Awesome. Thank it's you. so great to have that movie today. Uh, thank you. It's so amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, and then uh, the next slide, just want to, um, unfortunately, um, Patrick Carney from Rushmark couldn't be with us today, but, you know, the first National Bank building is another um, high-rise building under construction for additional um, apartments downtown. And Robert Hunt, you've got a number of buildings you're going to tell us about. Come on up with Genesis Properties. Morning. Morning. Um, my name is Robert Hunt. Um, we manage and develop company, and I'm very excited to you to talk about a few projects that we're doing. Uh, built in 1924, uh, Martin Shoveler Showroom and Service Department was located at 616 Hall Street. It will become one commercial space and 39 residential apartments in this beautiful building. Uh, we like to think our partners that are involved um, in transforming and completing this project. Um, and it will be completed in August of 2012. Uh, the Corley Lofts are located at 214 East Gray Street. And it actually connects with the building behind it on Broad. Uh, with this additional space, we plan to uh, make these two building houses uh, into 24 new apartments and 34 commercial spaces. Um, the project should be completed in October of this year. The 700 Center is actually the old uh, Virginia Electric Power Company known as Vepco, and their corporate uh, headquarters were located there. It will be uh, renovated into 174 high-rise luxury apartments and 18,000 square feet of retail space. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll go to Cedar. Um, <laughs> uh, 
These luxury apartments will be located at the top of uh, Church Hill overlooking the city. Um, it'll be a four-story apartment complex and will host 151 apartments that will have granite countertops, direct television, and internet. Project should be completed in October of 2013. You're good. Uh, the parking lot is going to look a lot different after the construction. Um, the old carriage house will be incorporated into the new four-story apartments that will house 150 new apartments. Thank you, guys. I, I made it really short. They told me I only had four minutes. So. <laughs> Robert, you just, Robert, all the developers submit their um, presentations, and Robert had his on a timer, and I thought, gosh, he's going to be faster at doing this than I even try to be. So, um, but you've got some exciting projects, so that's great. And um, the last one was, it wraps around the, what we think of as the spaghetti warehouse, right? That's correct. So that, yeah. that you all saw that building probably when you walked from the parking over here to t today. Um, and the 700 Center, another high-rise building that's getting converted to apartments. So that's great to see some of these Class C office spaces converted. Thank you. Yeah, they, they actually, uh, that building was really neat uh, when it was first made. It, um, it actually had um, flames shooting out of the top of it, so. Are you gonna do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. And um, let's see, I think we've got um, Chris. What is, who's here from Cincy? Oh, wait, sorry. I just mixed myself up. Brian White, I'm sorry. Brian White is next, <laughs> jumping ahead. Thank you. We, we've got a few to talk about, and I'm going to be, um, I, I guess, have the distinction of having the least professional PowerPoint presentation. I, I threw this together yesterday afternoon, so I apologize for it. Um, we're, we're working on three main projects right now. Um, we're the final building in our uh, atrium lofts at cold storage complex. It's a uh, five building de development, and uh, this is the, uh, the last of those. Um, we are renovating our uh, apartment building, Rockets View Apartments, at uh, 2800 block of East Main, and getting ready to break ground later this summer on the fourth phase, which is the only new construction phase of our um, Lofts at Canal Walk property. I don't know how I... Oh, Alex. Okay. Let's flip it. <laughs> there we go. Um, Atrium lofts of cold storage. This, the, the last building is 72 units. It is uh, far heavier into two bedrooms than uh, the previous phases, and uh, that's, that's just a, a consequence of how the building lays out. Uh, you got to fit these things where they fit, um, and uh, this one lays out better for two bedroom units. Um, it, leasing's been going well so far. Uh, we now, this, with the addition of this new building, it's going to give us 328 units of the first four buildings that are uh, already in service, we are effectively at 100% um, occupancy. And, and that, you know, I, it, it's good. We shouldn't complain. It always makes me wonder if maybe we need to raise rents a little bit. But uh, um, we, uh, things are, 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 are going great. We have our first move-ins tomorrow, June 1st, uh, with the fifth floor, which is our top floor being finished, and we're going to kind of roll out the uh, floors below it uh, on two week intervals, hopefully. Um, we've got about half of it leased already, and um, um, you know, it, we, we, are, we are thrilled with um, the reception that, that uh, this property in kind of an odd location has gotten. Um, the rest of the complex, uh, as we do in almost all of our things, you pay your rent, and then we pay everything else. Um, electricity, cable television, internet, water, sewer. Uh, come pick up the trash by your apartment door, even. Uh, we have two swimming pools. We already have two swimming pools, two fitness centers, free parking, including some structured parking um, behind the complex, and uh, granite countertop stainless steel appliances. And I put a little picture in there of a little thing we've started doing, which people seem to really respond to, is an iPod docking station. In every unit, you just set your little iPod on there. We got speakers in the walls, and you don't even need a stereo. And um, it's kind of a cool little feature. I think other people have started doing it as well. 
Uh, Rockets View renovation. This was one of the very first historically renovated, or renovated with using historic tax credits uh, properties in Richmond. Um, it did well for its time, but the, the apartment market has changed and people's expectations uh, have changed. We had laminate countertops, we had, you know, white appliances, we had um, really no community amenities in there and, and, and people um, began to expect a little bit more. So we're going through and we are uh, renovating them to have all the, the finishes that uh, the highest end apartments have. Um, we're also going to add 15 additional apartments in the lowest level of the building, which were not previously there. Uh, we're adding um, uh, a, a swimming pool with a vanishing edge overlooking the James River, which is going to be really cool uh, when that's done. You can't tell by that bottom picture because it looks like a mess, but it's going to be nice. Um, and um, fitness center, all those things, which uh, uh, ought to be finished in about a month or six weeks. And finally, uh, the uh, final building in our Lofset Canal Walk property. We thought we were finished uh, with the Lofset Canal Walk. We had it was the old Philip Morris headquarters between eight, or excuse me, between 19th, 20th, Main and Cary, uh, in Shaco Bottom, and uh, we renovated that city block in three phases. Um, but it did so well, and we owned, we happened to own uh, half of the block next to it. We decided that we we're going to do some new construction there. Uh, so we are going to build, be building um, an additional 130 apartments right there and it will be, those apartments are going to be kind of in line finish wise and size wise with uh, what we call the upper loss at Canal Walk, the tallest building of our existing phase which is uh, the, 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 the highest end of, 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 the, of those apartments. Um, and we're going to, um, it's going to have its own swimming pool, own fitness center, but those residents will also have access to the community amenities in the first three phases. Um, and uh, we are excited to get started on there. It's going to fill in one of the last kind of vacant lots in the Tobacco Row, uh, part of downtown Richmond. Thank you very much. All right, investment. Uh, investment, uh, the Canal Walk 4 is 22-ish. Uh, the uh, cold storage is 15. And, and that's just building five. Right, 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 right. And it's confusing, but we call it building one. Oh. But yeah, uh, that's 15. And then the Rockets view is about two and a half. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and Dave Camino, come on up and let's hear what you've got going on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, my name is David Camino. And uh, just a, a Shout out to one of the tenants, uh, CoLab, uh, did our uh, website recently for a uh, boutique hotel that uh, we just completed on Virginia's Eastern Shore. I know there's no golfers out here, but if you ever do go to Bay Creek, please uh, look up the hotel, Cape Charles, we just finished that uh, facility. Um, so I completed my PowerPoint presentation yesterday. Uh, the Harvester building is uh, downtown 1709 East Clay Street. It's actually one of five buildings uh, associated with the former Richmond Cold Storage Complex. Uh, it's actually adjacent to the building that Brian is just completing now. Um, we started uh, construction uh, last year in February. We completed it in, uh, in November and, and CO'd it, uh, I guess, in, December, on, in November. Um, I do have some notes here. It's a beautiful structure. Uh, it's 44,000 square feet. It's 36 units. Uh, there's a parking garage in the basement. You can go to the next side. That's the front of it. You go to the next slide. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, um, you know the, the, the projects that we do are, are probably a little bit more on the contemporary side uh, here in the Richmond Marketplace, um, but we seem to have found a niche in that regard. Uh, you know, sliding walls, uh, typically we use uh, bamboo, a variety of bamboo, glass tile. Um, you go to the next slide. A couple of different color schemes there. Um, 17 to 9. Uh, netted out at about 27,000 square feet uh, rentable space. Uh, we've got 24 one-bedroom units, 12 two-bedroom units. It's 100% it's, it's lease, uh, and it's about $1.52 a square foot. And the average size uh, of those units is about 760 square feet. They're on the larger side, but again, that was really a, uh, you know, a product of the, the way the building laid out, you know, not having windows on one wall. Um, let me go to the next slide. That's our uh, the view shed uh, to the west. Um, it's got a, obviously, it's got beautiful, uh, beautiful vistas both to the west and to the south. 
uh, so, you know, one of the bathrooms, uh, hard pine vanity, laminates, uh, dual flush, uh, Ronbo sinks. That's another one of the, uh, you know, one of the more narrow units uh, with a galley-style kitchen and that sliding wall in the back there. Uh, 314 West Gray Street. Um, this is a project actually I did uh, in partnership with Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a vacant building, about 28,000 square feet. So, uh, it's a block away from the, uh, the Richmond Police Station. Um, it's about a block away from one of the BCU's new parking uh, decks. But uh, this building had been vacant for probably about 25 years, and really it was just a, you know, it was basically a, ho a hotel for homeless people. It was, it was in rough, rough shape. Um, so uh, Richmond Redevelopment Housing owned it. They uh, wanted to try doing a uh, joint venture on, a, on, a, on this project. So we came in, um, we go to the next picture. Uh, Walter Parks was the architect on this job. Commonwealth Architects was the, uh, was the architect on uh, 1709, which, which we received a great reward for uh, multifamily uh, project. Um, you can go to the next. So, the, you know, this building was, it, it had no windows on it to speak of, and, and we, uh, that's, that's the western side of it, and we cut about 100 openings, three foot by seven foot, on, you know, 50 on each side, basically, to, you know, bring some real light into this. It was a former dormitory building. Um, uh, notwithstanding what you said, Brian, this building actually, uh, <laughs> this building you know, has leased up remarkably quick. About a month it took us to lease it up uh, at buck 63 square foot. Uh, the units are small, and that's probably why the, uh, the square footage uh, rental unit, uh, unit rental price is what it is. Uh, there's 35 one-bedroom units. Uh, th those are two of the openings that we put in, in a typical room. It's got concrete floors, very sturdy CMU walls, uh, perfect for student housing. Uh, <laughs> go to the next slide. Uh, there's one of the, uh, you know, that's a, you know, sort of an ebony uh, bamboo kitchen with uh, you know, glass tile, uh, Carrera marble tops, um, you know, again, very contemporary look in, the, in our projects. Uh, it's one of the bathrooms and Carrera marble dual flush toilets. You go to the next one. It's another configuration of a smaller kitchen. Um, we actually, and these are sort of while they were in progress, but a uh, little water feature and a little garden area and one of the sunken uh, access areas to the building. And uh, this is not downtown, and I wasn't going to speak to it, but Lucy asked me to mention it. We've got a little project over at uh, Broad Boulevard, uh, the FFV building. Uh, as you know, it is Interbank. It's about 250,000 square feet. Um, we're in the SUP process with the city. Hopefully, we'll get it off the mayor's desk in time to get in front of city council uh, in July. And uh, we hope to commence construction in uh, October and November. And uh, it's going to be 178 units. It's going to be parking. Uh, we've got 270 spots. About 180 of them are in the basement that uh, goes underneath the entire building. Uh, we develop the uh, residential component first. On the western side, there's a 44,000 square foot warehouse that we're having discussions with some uh, retailers about. Um, looking at acquiring some other parcels surrounding it to uh, expand the, the footprint and uh, perhaps bring additional retail to it. Um, we're actually planning this as a, uh, as a LEED certified building. We think that this is probably going to be um, you know, the largest adaptive reuse LEED certification project in the, in the Commonwealth. There's only going to be among them. Right now we're looking at uh, either basic certification or, or silver certification, but it's a, um, you know, it's, a, it's a very arduous process to try to get a building this size and this type, uh, weed certified, but um, you know, that's what we are intending to do at this point. Um, and uh, you know, we think that's the right thing to do. It's uh, you know, quintessentially urban development, uh, sustainable development, and uh, you know, we're, we're very, very excited to you know, hopefully make this the benchmark for the development on the Boulevard Corridor as sort of the gateway into the city of Richmond. So uh, you know, we're over the moon about this project and about this building, and uh, we can't wait to get started on it. That's it. Thank Great. You, Thank you so much. All right, Chris. Um, and you all have moved your corporate headquarters downtown, right? Mon Monier Construction. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm Chris Johnson with the uh, Monument Companies, and we'll talk about 
Um, some projects we've done with uh, Sensei Development, uh, some joint ventures all down in um, Jaco Bottom. And yes, we're very happy to be downtown. Love it, we're at, uh, we're at 15th and Cary. Uh, so this is uh, the tracks. Um, it's kind of the westernmost piece of the uh, mini PV store, storage building. Uh, it was a little bit complicated because it's the first project that's involved air rights that uh, we've had to deal with. Um, but anyhow, we got through all that. The DHR was very kind to us and let us put in all those nice big windows, uh, which has really helped and I think improved the, the facade and the look of the area. It's about three months ahead of schedule, so we're actually going to be done mid-July and we started at the beginning of February. So um, I don't have our tax credit investor in yet, so the construction people are pushing me, but we're real excited, 43 units. Uh, Scott Fowler with Fowler Architecture. I uh, was architect and um, Zenith Bank did the construction uh, and we're actively starting to market and lease now. This is Old Stone Row. We may have touched on this one last year, 96 unit, uh, part of our Shaco Valley Heights development. Um, that overall development is definitely the most exciting project I've ever been a part of. Uh, it's an entire city block, mix of historic uh, buildings and new construction. This is uh, 96 units. We started moving people in in November. We're full, we've been full. Um, rents are strong, bucks 67, I think, a foot. Um, kind of a neat contemporary building and um, excited to have it done and have it full. And uh, uh, Walter Parks was the architect and VHDA was the uh, lender and um, Monument Construction, of course, did the construction. Always ahead of schedule and under budget. <laughs> One of, one of two, typically. <laughs> um, this is Trolley Commons. This is a very cool project. Uh, actually, the last piece of Shaka Valley Heights. Um, this is the corner building you guys may have seen that's going up. This is a pretty contemporary, uh, expensive building. And once it's finished, it's just going to be miraculous. The architecture is unbelievable. Uh, Walter Parks again was the architect. And uh, Union is uh, providing the financing. Uh, it should be done in August, September of this year. Um, rents are a buck 75 a foot and we really don't have much to show people yet we've already leased 10 units I mean it's just amazing how strong the, uh, the downtown market is um, but anyway so August September we should be wrapping wrapping this one up and this is just the uh, the amenities for the Shaco Valley Heights that that's what the pool uh, was kind of supposed to look like and now it's you know bigger and nicer and has a fire pit and all kinds of stuff, which is how these things tend to happen. The, the project's just been received so strongly that we wanted to really put in some, some nice amenities. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I am told the pool will be open uh, in about two weeks. Um, the entire development, you know, it's close to 30 million for the Jaco Valley Heights piece, 201 units, bunch of commercial space. Um, you know, everything, everything is full. And oh, and then Trolley Commons, we did just lease last week the uh, first commercial space to a, a high-end spa that's coming in downtown. And all the commercial and the entire development um, that's finished is, is all full strong, with strong rents. So um, I think that's it. That's great. Thank you. Strong, strong rents. We love hearing that. Um, and Robert Hensley is here for, with um, WVS to tell us a little bit about rockets. You all just. Keep going, don't you? And I'm going to do my best to uh, wing this presentation. We had an emergency golf game come up last night, so uh, apparently I'm the fill-in for this. We, um, we actually have several tenants that um, we have been very, very fortunate. Um, the, the red section on the end down there, this is the, the city end, and that's the Henrico County side. On this far end, um, the, the blue section on the bottom is the marina slips. Um, the boathouse is actually what looks like to be B, or A, excuse me. The conch is B, if many of you have been down to the boathouse restaurant. On this, we have at the top, um, this would be Route 5, would be at the top of this, uh, river down at the bottom, and we'll keep flopping back. Um, 150 apartments in the top, um, and then on the bottom of that, we have 10,000 square feet of commercial space, of which we're very fortunate to be in the design phase right now. Um, with a local advertising agency um, that should be in hopefully by the end of, or of March 2013. Um, that one's a little bit earlier. Um, and then towards the middle 
As we all know, that's a little bit tougher market. We have uh, office and medical office space that we're intending to put in there. We have a little bit of interest on that, um, but that's a little bit trickier guy to manage, obviously. And then on the bottom of this, um, to go along with the Boathouse and Conk and M Bistro, um, our restaurants uh, continue to be strong desires being right on the water. We have uh, a signed letter of intent for the one on the left, beautiful patio going down to the river, um, a lot of outside seating and so forth. The, the piece that you see right above that is actually the Virginia Capitol Trail. We'll go right in front of that, which will be amazing. And then to the left, to the right side of that, we actually have about 8,000 square feet of restaurant space, for which we're talking to a couple other people, but still in that work through process on that. You can go to the next one. And then wait for it to change and then go back to it again. <laughs> um, this is probably one of the most exciting things for us. Um, Brown Greer, we have a signed LOI with this uh, outfit and uh, hopefully within the next two weeks the contract will be signed. Um, we anticipate, if all goes well, and it almost never does, um, that uh, March 2013 these guys will be moving in. Um, that's a really exciting coup for us. That's about 36,000 square feet in a building that, that looks much like this on the inside. It's an older uh, historic renovation building. Go to the next one. And then uh, we're also very fortunate that uh, probably three or four months ago now, we signed a lease with these guys. They actually move in August 1st, Rawls, McNellis and Mitchell, another local law firm. They are taking the, the middle building, what if some of you have been down, used to be our sales center. We kind of moved everything around to accommodate these guys. Um, they're taking the bottom two floors, 6,000 square feet, and that's about 40 or 50 employees that will be in there. You can go to the next slide. And this is the third of our restaurant in the series. He's, uh, he's doing quite well. If you haven't been down, I think this is probably some of the best food I've ever eaten. He uh, he's consistently uh, serves great food. It's, a, it's one of our high-end restaurants. We have a good mix of restaurants in there, but he's opened and been, uh, been doing very well. This uh, shows the Nina and Pinta in one of the events we had last weekend, if anybody came down, the big fireworks show. Um, this actually shows the 15 new transient slips that we have in, as well as you can kind of see it right in front of the, uh, the Pinta there, the new gas dock that's there. A lot of people are very excited about that. The, uh, the bass fishermen have already been requesting to come up. Um, so we're excited about that. And then uh, the list of events. Uh, I'm not real sure why they added this in. We're not an event company, but uh, nonetheless, this has been doing very well for us. That's the fireworks show we had last weekend. We had, uh, they're still doing the final tally, but somewhere between uh, 4,000 and 5,000 people. And some actually came in from out of state to see that. So that was actually very exciting, but more exciting for us. We had 350 people come through the sales center and one contract written. So. <laughs> That's actually what we're more excited about. And uh, 30 million. <laughs> Knew that was coming. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Um, and Robin Miller, come on up and tell us what you've got going on in Shaco Bottom and in Manchester. Well, this year we have currently three projects uh, going on uh, with my partner, Dan Gecker. Um, the first is located two blocks that way on Perry Street, 909 Perry Street. Uh, it's a, a nice project. Uh, we like the size of the 40, 50, to 60 units rather than the 100 or 200 units, and it fits in nicely with the neighborhood of Manchester, which, by the way, I actually live uh, right across from this project in old Manchester Loss, and it really is a great neighborhood. It's come a long way. In, in the last... Uh, six years since uh, Dan Gecker and I bought our first property over there, we've calculated we brought in about 350 new residents that are uh, living and working uh, downtown and, and uh, it's great at night, people are jogging, walking their dog, riding their bikes. And so um, this project we're excited about, we uh, are not gonna be finished till, well, the temporary CO in July 15th, we've already leased uh, 12 units uh, and that's ahead of, well ahead of schedule. Uh, 44 apartments, we'll have our own leasing office in there, it's, we'll have a clubhouse and a gym, 48 parking spaces, it's over 40,000 square feet, uh, as I said, completed in July, and the total investment, 5.2 million. Uh, we are working with VHDA on that, this is our third project uh, with them, and we found uh, that it's been uh, great to, to use their loans. This particular loan is what's called their 80-20 loan, and um, 
Uh, it encourages mixed income, uh, which I personally believe in. And so 20% of these uh, dwellings will be leased to folks who are required to make 50% or less of the area median income. Uh, and we're gonna try to use some more of these loans in the neighborhood. I think that's really one of the keys to get, get mixed incomes in the neighborhoods. Our next project, um, very small. This is a kind of, we don't normally do ones these small, but this is, uh, my partner Dan Gecker really liked this building. It's on 19th Street. It's the old Pace King Mansion. Long story, it got into some trouble and went for sale and kind of a foreclosure was forthcoming. We bought the property and we're gonna put uh, some offices in there. Uh, Dan and I will have offices there. Uh, and we're looking for, we're talking to a couple other folks to move in. Built in 1860. Um, over 8,000 square feet, and we'll have it completed at the end of June. Total investment, 1.2 million. And as part of the deal, when we bought that, we got the building right next door, which is an old ware a warehouse. I say old, it was only built in about 1995, so it wasn't that old. Uh, but it was a solid steel brick structure. Um, and so we decided to uh, convert that to 16 uh, market rate apartments. Um, that will be finished uh, in August. Uh, and the investment there is about 2 million. Uh, thank you very much. Great. And Robin, how do you, how do you see the leasing going? You all have the same story? Or? Oh, yeah. Our, our leasing uh, is, is going great. We've actually had to hire more leasing agents. Uh, the, the rental market is very strong. Um, we don't particularly cater just to students, although we do have some students. But the young professionals want to live downtown Richmond. I've been doing this, as Lucy said, uh, for a long time, and the market seems to get stronger every year. Uh, I think it will continue. Um, we're as gasoline prices get get higher, people, not as many people want to live in the suburbs, um, and there's a lot of the kind of echo, baby boomer echo generation, uh, uh, the Gen Ys that just they want to be downtown, and um, it's happening. And I think it will continue to happen. Great, thank you. We love hearing that. And I've got some numbers that might back that up later. Come on up, Rick Gregory. You've got a, several very exciting projects and maybe one or two that people aren't aware of. I've got a couple of my projects and I'm going to stand here so I can see. Um, anyway. The first project that's on the uh, screen now is um, the one we're calling the Locks Project. You may have uh, heard it referred to as the Reynolds. What it is is the old. Uh, Reynolds aluminum distribution site that is uh, located on the canal walk and what's the very exciting piece of this is that it's essentially the last tooth in the uh, city's goal to uh, develop a essentially a linear park that begins at uh, 14th Street and goes all the way to, uh, to Browns Island and Bell Island. Um, this project will be developed in uh, essentially three phases. The first phase here involves a, about 170 apartments, and what it is is a historic rehab of four existing uh, historic buildings. That's uh, the numbers one through four there. The fifth building uh, will start uh, beginning of next year, and that's a new construction, about 70 to 80 apartments over top of about 10,000 square feet of commercial. Um, just the interesting about this, you know, we talk about gestation periods and how long it takes to go from um, you know, imagination to um, your destination of getting at least. This project has been in someone's mind for at least 30 years. So uh, we're thank goodness that it's finally here. Uh, also, like Robin, we have used the HDA program. They were great. Uh, we fiddled around with HUD and uh, could not get there from here. Uh, with them because of their uh, demand for their product. VHDA got us from uh, discussion to closing in 100 days, so it was very incredible. This is a site from the Troutman Sanders building showing the Italian Aid building in the white. Uh, we have, first floor will be a restaurant which we have leased. Uh, we'll probably make an announcement in the next week or so about who the uh, restaurant tour is. Very exciting about that. You see the new bridge there, that's one of the city's improvements that will be built this year. The city has allocated 1.8 million to uh, finish out the canal walk from essentially, uh, I think it's from the, from essentially Hat Factory to the uh, bridge there on 11th Street. Um, it's gonna be a great project. Let's see, these are just some of the numbers on it. 
again, what we talked about. Charles, the investment is 34 million plus another 10 for the new construction, so uh, 45 million. Uh, amenities is what you would expect for a project at this location. Uh, we're looking for it to be at the top end of rent and uh, top end of, of uh, amenities. We're going to have covered parking, the other things you would expect there. Progress, we've been uh, fortunate to have hired Branch Construction, a large construction company out of Roanoke. Uh, they're 20% complete to date, uh, and we hope to have the first apartments available for rent in, no in November of this year with the final uh, apartments coming online. Uh, probably late spring next year. The second project, and by the way, the, the first project, the loss, is a joint venture between WBS, the uh, Rockets Landing people, and Fountainhead Development. This project, South Canal Lofts, is a Fountainhead project. And uh, this involves the uh, renovation, historic renovation of the old Carastar paper mill. As soon as you cross over the Mayo Bridge, on the right there, there's about two and a half acres uh, nestled in between the, uh, my marking person said use the word nestled, but uh, it's between the um, flood wall and Miller Creek, which is going to give it a uh, great advantage. Uh, Miller Creek is essentially going to be another part of the city's uh, linear park system. Uh, that's going to be deck, uh, landscape and be a beautiful addition to the city's park system. And then, uh, to the north, you have the views of the skyline of the James River. Uh, it'll be 93 apartments. Um, I think one of the incredible things since we've gone through these projects this morning, uh, the vast majority of these projects, with the exception of the, uh, the government-sponsored projects, have all been driven by st tax credits, federal tax credits, state tax credits, the city's, uh, city's uh, property tax abatement program. And these have been great things and why, you know, as an attorney doing real estate, I don't see many new construction projects today, but I see one heck of a lot of historic rehab projects. So that's a great program for Richmond. I'm going to the next one. Miller Brick, um, this is located at 500 Stockton. Uh, it's currently occupied by Miller Manufacturing. They've been there for at least uh, 70 years. They were uh, located there as part of the war effort to build uh, supplies for World War II and have uh, been there and have different inter uh, iterations of construction there. Uh, this is phase one of a two and a half uh, city block project. Uh, this phase will have 110 um, apartments, have a pool and the things that you would associate again with an upper scale uh, development. It's essentially a extenuation of our Plant Zero complex where we started, I think, you know, Robin and uh, Fountainhead were kind of the first uh, adventurers over here together with Charles and uh, Sam McDonald. Um, and so this project will be able to share a lot of amenities. There'll be cross-sharing amenities between the two projects. Um, let's see, we got enough different Oh, yeah, 18 million, Charles, in uh, development costs, and then the project right that'll come right behind that next year will be about the same size. Thank you. Fantastic. Those are really exciting. And David, come on up. David Klesper from Grub Properties, and this is one of y'all's first ventures into downtown Richmond, right? It is, yes, thank you. Um, David Klebsworth with Grub Properties. This is Link Apartments, Manchester. Um, go ahead and flip to the next. Uh, we got some stats here. Um, this new project in Manchester is at the foot of the 9th Street Bridge, uh, right next to the Sun Trust and the UPS building there. Uh, it's 187 one and two bedroom uh, apartments, uh, ranging from about 645 square feet up to 1,100 square feet. Um, we do have one commercial space in there that's available for lease if anybody wants a little office or coffee shop to service uh, some of the SunTrust folks. Uh, small space, 740 square feet. Um, a lot of you may have seen this project driving in today. It was uh, right as you came over the bridge if you're coming from downtown. Um, we do have a secured parking deck 
uh, pool courtyard, fitness center, all of the first class amenities that uh, many of the other folks have talked about here uh, today. Um, many of the units have got skyline views uh, of, of the city. Um, all the units have granite countertops, uh, free Wi-Fi, washer dryers as well. Um, we did design this project um, to meet the NAHB green building standards and we'll be getting that certified um, at the end of the project. Um, we'll have on-site property management, um, you know, no appointment necessary, prospects can just come in uh, and, and even after lease up we'll be on-site uh, full time uh, for, for helping the residents, collecting packages, those sorts of things. Um, we've got uh, our, our construction schedule there uh, finishing up here in September. We're going to be starting our pre-leasing um, uh, next week actually, uh, just two blocks away over here at the Manchester Pie Factory over on Hall Street. Um, little uh, map view here uh, where we are there at the, the foot of the Manchester Bridge there um, in the heart of Manchester here with pretty convenient access to downtown uh, over the bridge you could easily walk over the riverfront plaza um, uh, mead west vaco and then uh, just two miles over to, to vcu uh, as well um, and we've got our, our website there uh, as well on the bottom uh, link manchester which is uh, up uh, temporarily up right now and we'll have our, our full site here uh, in another couple weeks for the next slide um, We've got a rendering here of the, the pool courtyard and then uh, below uh, what it looks like. And actually that's a couple weeks old. So we, we've made a lot of good progress since then. Um, and again, we'll have uh, units coming online in September, uh, our first units, and then kind of deliver through uh, November, and, uh, but starting pre-leasing uh, next week. And last one here is our team. Um, a lot of folks involved in this project put together a great team. Uh, we teamed with uh, Dominion Realty Partners, Michael Campbell, who was up here earlier. Um, uh, KBS is our general contractor, also financed through VHDA, uh, as many of the others have mentioned, and uh, that's been a great program and great working with them. Uh, our architect is Rule Joy Trammell Rubio out of Atlanta. We've got uh, the local office of RK and K here working on civil, and then Scott Ucrop and his team at Three North helping us with uh, some interior furnishings. So uh, I kept it quick for you. Uh, first yeah. time up, you know, I, I told I was told I got to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great, and your investment. You put the investment uh, in this project about twenty-one million. Excellent, great. Well, welcome to Richmond. Um, We've got just two more. Um, Tom Wilkinson from Franklin Development is here to um, tell us about uh, at least one property, but you might give us a little sneak on another one, huh? Good morning. I'm Tom Wilkinson, as Lucy said. I'm uh, one of the, the managing member of Franklin Development Group. This is a rendering of Hopper Paper Loss. It's uh, the corner of Mari and Commerce. Uh, Rick, Gregory, and Tom Pop and I worked a deal on some uh, parcels over there and ended up with this uh, building and some parking lots. This building is uh, in the process of development as we speak. We expect to begin uh, leasing this summer. We have, I think, 38 units coming on stream and one quarter of the building in August. Uh, the other total of 138 will be on stream and leased up, or hopefully, or hopefully leased up uh, by December or January. And the, the things that you've heard about all the other uh, historic tax credit projects are true of this one, you know, granite countertops and really nice appliances and free Wi-Fi and all that kind of thing, free parking. Uh, MGT's building it, Walter Parks designed it, Stellar One financed it, as well as a bank from uh, Iowa, if you would believe that a bank from Iowa would make a loan in uh, Richmond, they did. They made a bridge loan. Uh, the fellow that owns that bank, and Mitch, I noticed I mentioned these, it's an Iowa bank, it's not a um, Richmond bank, so the last, his last name does not start with a U. It's a fellow named Craig Haysmark. <clears throat> Craig uh, visit, visited Richmond a lot, liked this project, but fell in love with what we think of as the Rental South project, which is right behind me. 
And Craig was so enamored with it, he, uh, he knew that I was trying to acquire it and offered a few months ago to raise several million dollars of equity that he would, he would put up in conjunction with an equal amount of debt. We got all those things in writing and have, uh, we're a long way towards closing. And I should say, uh, can, can you go to the next slide? I should say that I, if I had a contract to buy this property, the rental sales property, there would be a provision in the contract with the first name confidentiality. And uh, I would not be allowed to say that I have a contract. So I'm not saying I have a contract, but I am saying that I am planning on developing that project. I think that's the safest thing to say. At any rate, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Haysmeyer, put all the equity together and uh, we were all set to go. 17 days ago, I'm sitting at my, in my house in Williamsburg, which is where my sport coat is, by the way, so I apologize for not wearing a sport coat and tie. And uh, his lieutenant called me and said, Tom, I have some bad news, Craig died. So I lost my investor 17 days ago. Um, very unexpected. So in the last 17 days, we have, uh, to say the least, been scrambling. And we have uh, uh, replaced Craig, although he is uh, irreplaceable in my mind. He's not only an investor, but a friend. At any rate, when we get this project done, there will be uh, some place in there, uh, a Craig Haysmeyer garden or a memorial of some type for uh, Craig because of his, his faith in the project and in me. This project is uh, 17 acres. Uh, the way it works, with using historic tax credits, we will develop the three buildings in the middle, which are historic, which are, if I'm oriented correctly, they're over, over there, okay, wherever they are. Um, those, that's about a $52 million project. It's about $15 million of equity from historic tax mm -hmm. credits. And uh, if you do the math in your head, it's $35 million of debt. We'll either do those buildings sequentially or we'll do them all at one time. We have one uh, money center bank that's offered to uh, verbally but not in writing yet finance the whole $35 million. At any rate, by doing those three projects, uh, 317 units, lots of parking all over the place, uh, we end up owning all the rest of the land free and clear. The rest of the land free and clear contain, in, includes seven acres to the left and, uh, and to the north on the top, uh, essentially on the James River with magnificent views of the city of Richmond. Uh, I call it the million dollar view. If you've been to Legends lately and had a hamburger and a beer, as I do about every two weeks, I recommend the Legends Brown Ale and the hamburgers medium rare, but uh, you will see how wonderful the view is of the city. And uh, that land, we think, we've been talking to some office mm -hmm. developers and some other folks. Uh, we've had one fellow that talked to us about putting uh, a million square feet of office towers there, two 18-story towers. We've had some people talk to us about putting a hotel up at the top, a 13-story hotel. We're talking to other developers about the land on uh, a whole street over on the right, about putting an upscale grocer, and I don't have a name to tell you, but we'll be an upscale grocer. It could be a Kroger, it could be a, it won't be a Trader Joe's, it could be a, somebody of that nature. At any rate, about 20, 30,000 square feet grocery store. There's 2,600 apartments within one mile of that site. In Richmond, the average occupancy of an apartment is almost two people, so there's 5,000 people who live within a mile. Those of you who are retail developers will tell, we usually tell you that. If you have 20,000 people within three miles who make a certain amount of money, you usually justify a grocery store. So we, it might take 20 years or it might take two years, I don't know, but there will eventually be an upscale grocer on, the, on the, that site. By virtue of the fact that we own, will own most of the dirt free and clear, we will uh, develop this site opportunistically. If Brian needs some site, some dirt for some more classrooms and uh, uh, apartments, it would, we'll have the dirt available. If some of the, those of you do other types of development are interested, because we have zero basis in the dirt, we will be able to either develop it ourselves or joint venture it and uh, make, the, make the numbers work. But that is uh, 
the development. I'm not claiming I have it under contract because I don't want to violate a contract that I won't admit to, but I am, I will tell you that I do plan to develop it and uh, we're very close to being able to make that happen. Thank you. Great, thank you. Well, good luck. All right, and Hopper Flats is how many million? 17. 17, and then, um, okay, we, wouldn't, we won't want to add in rentals quite yet. Um, Charles McFarlane, our, um, oh, do you need to tally? We're close. Okay. Um, Charles is going to give us a little overview of a couple of their projects, and then I've got some of the um, census information to share with you, some numbers, and then we're going to wrap it up. We, uh, we highlighted this project last year. It was called Lorillard um, Tobacco Building, and we've um, changed the uh, name this year. It's, uh, and we've, we've established a, a brand identity, 2323 East Main. Um, and you can see it actually consists, these are the last buildings that um, Far City owned, and we purchased them last year. We uh, were under contract since then. We purchased those closed in October. The two buildings uh, lower on the screen, approximately 60,000 square feet, three stories in the east building on the left, or on the upper part of the screen, and uh, about 28,000 square feet in the building um, on the corner. And that's 20, basically the block between 23rd and 24th. And then it also included the purchase of the half block next to Millie's between 25th and 26th. And that initially would be surface parking. Um, next slide. And you can see proximity, obviously, to the river in downtown. And to the new Capitol Trails, which is um, under construction. There's a current uh, photograph. Um, I'm sure everybody's driven by those buildings as I had for many years and kind of nondescript and dirty and really hadn't paid much attention to them. And I can tell you um, they are gorgeous inside. A lot of architectural detail. The one on the left was uh, designed by famous Richmond architect Duncan Lee who uh, designed the uh, dining room or, or ballroom addition onto the governor's mansion. The one on the right was built in 1907. The third floor was added in 1917, and the one on the left was built in 1917. They originally was the Whitlock branch of American Tobacco, um, became Lorillard Tobacco, and then subsequently M&B Hat, and then that was M&B Hat until they moved out about uh, about a year ago. Next slide. I uh, love this uh, photograph. This is. Um, Obviously, old Richmond, you can see the cobblestone streets and the horse-drawn carriage. And you can see actually the sign on the building that says Whitlock Branch. And um, here's what they look like inside. Uh, tall ceilings, uh, lots of windows, lots of light, and uh, beautiful floors. Nice brick detail. And this is the design that we've uh, proposed tying the two buildings together. Tall three-story glass atrium, communicating stairs, open elevator and then an entry from East Main. Uh, at, the, at the back is an alley, cobblestone alley, which would provide uh, passenger drop-off and pickup and deliveries. Next slide. And uh, possible future. Uh, this is the site uh, next to Millie's. We've uh, actually uh, strictly a block plan, no intent to be architectural. Uh, it could be office, could be um, hotel in one wing. Um, approximately 225,000 square feet and 450 uh, car parking below. This is uh, just a few blocks from here. Uh, we, at the same time, Robin Miller purchased his land from the Virginia Museum Foundation. We purchased about uh, two blocks and we're getting ready to start mm -hmm. the first phase of that development, starting very modestly, uh, two addresses, two units, but four, or excuse me, two addresses, two buildings, but four units and we'll do four at a time. Uh, ben Adamson, who used to work with Robin, I think still does some work with Robin, has built uh, this same product across the street on McDonough at 14th, and he's done uh, quite a few of these uh, successfully. They're a little bit larger uh, units. Um, cost per square foot, or rental per square foot is more than the dollar five, dollar 10 per square foot as compared to what some of them, some more space, backyard deck, um, just a little more open uh, uh, townhouse feel. And uh, we go before the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals next week, 
and uh, assuming approval will start uh, next week. Uh, and, and Ben Adamson is going to be our contractor. And that, I just wanted to, to mention those. But there's, there's been quite a bit, Robin has been responsible for most of it, but quite a bit of infill new development in, in Old Manchester as well. And uh, that's not a great slide, but you can see it's the lower two blocks, uh, the blocks that we own. Robin actually owns the, uh, the yellow highlighted uh, portions above on the higher portion of the slide. And Ben Adamson developed the, uh, the uh, parcels to the left, upper left. And that's just a site plan. And that's it for those for that project. There were there are a number um, yeah. So that, that's great. And yeah. so what we wanted to do Oh and just the, uh, do uh, pro yeah, investment would be uh, the townhouse project is about a half a million dollars. The um, 2323 is about eight and a half million dollars. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. This is uh, Sam McDonald, who I consider is kind of the historian of Manchester, put together a little summary. And we've, we've done a few presentations for some various bank groups that have been in town. And um, so he, he did an aerial, used an aerial, and marked on it. I think Lucy had a uh, graphics person working on the train coming back yesterday who put together this graphic. So this is actually the first time that I'm seeing it. But I think it gives you an indication of the development that's taken place in Manchester. And Sam, as the historian said that, and I, I'll just give you some background, that uh, Manchester was originally known as Rocky Ridge. It was the port of entry for the slave ships. And then later it received coffee beans uh, ships uh, with coffee beans and shipped out tobacco and coal. In 1749, it was the original county seat of Chesterfield County. It was incorporated in 1769 as a town it became a city in 1874, and in 1910, it, it joined the city of Richmond. And um, the, Sam and Chris and I developed the first um, renovated, what was the old uh, Cheek Mill Coffee Building, it's 201 Warehouse, the first apartments over here. And that was about nine years ago. I think as uh, Rick Gregory said, there are now 2,400 units either completed or under construction in the Manchester neighborhood in that nine years, which is, is pretty remarkable. And there were several projects that weren't mentioned um, uh, earlier, which are under construction. There's a project at a uh, corner here of 7th and uh, Hull Street. There's one um, up on Bainbridge and 10th, between 10th and 11th. But um, you can see them highlighted here. You want to make some? Yeah, that's um it's just amazing what's happened in Manchester in, in such a short period of time. Um, Alex, you want, we, we just wrap up with a couple census information. Next one. So we pulled, we looked at um, you know some of the numbers downtown, and we've seen dramatic growth since 1990. And this is um, working with the city and the census information for the downtown parcels. I mean, census tracts, which are Belvedere to the bottom. Next slide. If you add in Manchester. Um, by 2010, we're at about 9,700 people living downtown. And if you add in, next slide, um, and if you add in then VCU Academic Campus in Oregon Hill and look at the downtown master plan footprint, we're at about 14,000 people living downtown as of the 2010 census, which was April 2010. And just by some quick calculations I did last week, um, not including the new things that have come on that we talked about today, another about 1,200 um, units probably came online the rest of 2010 and 2011. So downtown is really on a roll and we heard some really positive information about things leasing up 100% um, uh, and, and faster than folks expected and maybe we need to raise rent. So I think it's a good, good sign of um, the time downtown. Um, and I want to thank Tom. Um, Stills photography, sky shot photography for that wonderful aerial of Manchester. Um, and that's it. I wanted to, as the um, chairman of the marketing committee of Venture Richmond, I wanted to thank Lucy Mead and the Venture Richmond staff because I can tell you, having watched Lucy put on this program in past years, uh, I think you can see a lot of information for even developer that is involved in this business. It's always uh, interesting to me to attend because I find out a lot of information that I was unaware of, of developments that, um, you know, are, are newly announced. So I think it's, uh, it's certainly indicative, I hope, of what's the uh, future to come in Richmond and I think is ex certainly exciting. The total amount of, um, and thank you, thank you Lucy and Venture Richmond staff, I think they deserve 
a big round of applause. And also I want to uh, thank Scott Ucrop for hosting this event and opening his office and sharing with us. And we really do sincerely appreciate that very much. And um, the, to the grand total, now I must tell you, there was one project I stepped out uh, quickly and it was First National Bank. I don't know what the total, uh, we don't know what that was, but the, of the ones that I added up, and I didn't include all of Brian's VCU for the ones that he said were for coming next year, it was $900 million. So just under a billion dollars of development that's taken place in the near recent past last year, projected underway currently, which I think is, is remarkable. Uh, for for downtown Richmond. I think it's a lot to be excited about um, So again, thank you for coming. Uh, please spread the word 